Hello, everybody. It's Rick. It is Sunday. It's November the 4th, 2018. Uh, if you need to reach me, you can do it by email, by emailing me at rick0327 at me.com. Um, you know, when you email me, you're going to send a brief email. And, uh, you know, you look into... Um, find out how you can uh, get my affidavits, okay? Um, I just spent the last couple of days updating some of my affidavits, and, and what I'm doing is, um, you know, what we're going to do is, uh, I, I created uh, a petition to, to vacate a support order, all right? Um, and, and we're going to go by the um, proof that we have that the support order is void. Okay, so in the last video, we spoke about uh, the expedited uh, processes. Okay, now this is chapter six, essentials for attorneys and child support. This is their guide. Okay, and it's excellent for us because it's it, it shows the case laws and it shows what they're supposed to go by. Um, like every state is supposed to have their version of expedited process. And what they really do is they just basically mirror this. Okay. So, and the state is supposed to mirror this. So uh, the state is not allowed to, um, you know, modify it in any way. So, Every state, all of you, all of these child support hearings, you know, proceedings, whatever you want to call them, they are under expedited judicial and administrative process, depending on the state you're in. Most states are judicial, okay? Okay, and, and by the way, it, uh, constitutional-wise, States that were just using administrative, like um, Minnesota, were struck down as unconstitutional. Okay, so the the, the way they get away with it is they uh, they serve you right process to show up, and then they have a, a a fake judge or a surrogate judge, and then they um, <clears throat> it's funny as I'll show you they they they. Like right here, um, let me see here. All right. <clears throat> Definitions. Expedited judicial processes, okay? Expedited judicial processes are systems in which judge surrogates, all right? These are our fake judges, okay? Judge surrogates are referred by various titles, masters. We did this last, I touched on this last video, but now we're going to focus on a little better t on this video. Referees, commissioners, magistrates, support magistrates, hearing officers. The decision making occurs within the traditional judicial system as an extension or tier of the court. Judge surrogates examine evidence, right? Take testimony and enter findings or make recommendations for case disposition. All right, here we go. In many jurisdictions, a judge must approve the order. Okay? This supports what I've been telling you guys all this time, that these orders by these fakes, these surrogate judges, without a judge there is, is, uh, is void. Also, remember... Uh, we talk about all the time the, um, the Supreme Court decision, uh, Burnham versus Superior Court, that says a judgment by a, um, a person not a judge is void. Because why? Who was not there? The judicial authority was not there. Okay? See, what uh, they, they try and get away with, and I mentioned this in my other video, last video that they try and get away with, okay, well, now we're going to take, let's say they, they were to do it um, this way. By the way, they, they don't do it this way because this takes time. 
So what they do is they scam they scam us by issuing these this, the order like New York for instance they issue the uh, the sport magistrate order and they get it and by the way they uh, all the courts they have a uh, they have the support collections unit in the building so they basically like they, they they take the fake order and they hand it to like a runner and then the runner runs downstairs and and gives it to the uh, support collections unit and like that they're ruining your life they're destroying your life that fast but the way it's supposed to be done is it's supposed to be judicially reviewed now i mentioned this in in in, in a past video where the uh, correct way to do it is it's supposed to be judicially reviewed but how do they get away with it and i'm talking about new york now and they do in other areas you have to file an objection okay and then the objection that's their version of a judicial review and it's 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 improper okay it's completely improper because it's already out, already out in the world ruining you and you think you're object objecting and they, what they're doing is they're covering their rear ends by that's their way of saying they're judicially reviewing it so like in new york here when you file an objection it goes to a judge and then the judge says your objection is no good like they always do doesn't matter what you show them they always dismiss your objection okay this is what we're dealing with you know these, these people out of control but the, the what we got to do is is we're going to box them in we're going to use what we know we're going to use everything that they have here right here against them okay and that's what i've been doing all right so i put together um where is it right here uh vacate support order petition so what you're going to do is you're going to petition uh a court you're not going to go to the, the the domestic court okay i call it family court here in new york whatever it's circuit court wherever you are but you're going to go to a real court okay maybe an appellate court uh, a supreme court okay superior court and you're going to file a petition to vacate a support order made in violation of expedited processes support order is void under the 14th amendment and must be vacated in pursuance with federal rule 60b okay this is the you could do this right away okay and by the way i just made this so when I, i'm gonna start getting all these emails hey rick i'll get a copy of Listen, I just busted my ass updating this stuff. Okay? I updated my software. All right? And what I've done now is I'm able to add footnotes. And this is really good because now it's on it's on paper that I I am adding, you know, as as I make a statement in the in the petition, I'm backing it up with a footnote right here see down here I got all the footnotes right so security act and see what comes up there and if you guys can see it right there so I'm supporting everything with facts and now it's on paper it's gonna make their jobs a lot harder to do so when they try to dismiss our paperwork see it comes right it pops right up chapter 6 Essentials for attorneys and child, uh, child enforcement, expedited judicial and administrative processes. The increasing role of administrative agencies in establishing and in, uh, enforcing support is recognized by the federal full faith and credit for child support orders. So what they did was they created a statute like um, all... all um, uh, judgments from courts are to be recognized under the full faith and credit clause of the United States Constitution, Article 4, Section 1. So they created a federal uh, statute on 28 U.S.C. 1738. That way the, uh, 
the, the child support order because they want other states to recognize them because it's interstate, it's federal, so they can collect the the, uh, the money. That way, other states recognize the order. Okay, so uh, like the proceedings for establishment of paternity or child support are done in accordance with expedited processes on the forty five. CFR 303-101, all states under federal blah, 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 are to honor child support orders that are created under these expedited processes. Here's the thing. In order for them to get away with this, they need our uh, consent. Because by them just adding this line, safeguards for due process, does not get them off the hook. See, I mentioned that in, in, in a past video. They just add a line to cover them, but they still have to practice it. And how do they practice? They gotta, they gotta pr provide due process. So let's let's look at what their idea of due process is. Okay. Now there's advantages and disadvantages, and here's the disadvantages that they they cover: constitutionality. Okay. Well, here's a problem. Separation of powers issue raised by the advent of administrative processes. Okay, the surrogate judge is part of the executive branch. Just because they're working in the courts does not make them judicial. They're not judicial. Let's break down the word surrogate judge. What's a surrogate? A surrogate is a stand in. That means it's not a real judge. Okay, so you got to. Stand-in judge is not really a judge, okay? Uh, New York here, we have the, the sport magistrate. Sport magistrate is a non-judicial court employee, surrogate judge. So that means they have non-judicial powers. So that means the orders are void, okay? So um, here's the idea of due process, okay? So... Due process. The question of due process raises a fundamental federal quest, uh, constitutional protection. The 14th Amendment to the United States Constitution provides that a person shall not be deprived of life, liberty, or property without due process of law. The United States Supreme Court has established some very important criteria for due process. All right, let's see if they're following this now. Right to notice. Okay. A person has a right to be notified of any action being taken that concerns his or her liberty or property. How many of you have received in the mail a, you know, that you owe all this money in arrears because they went and had hearings without you? They do it all the time. They prefer you don't show up. That way they can hammer you. Okay? See, and they do it by mail. But see, mail is not considered an acceptable service because if you were to serve somebody with a lawsuit, right? Let's say you're trying to sue somebody and you showed up to court and said, well, I mailed them in, in the mail. The, the judge would throw you out of the court. Well, the same thing stands for this. This is considered a civil proceeding. So you're being sued for child support. They could call it whatever they want. You're being sued for child support. So them servicing you by mail is not an acceptable form of service. So what we're going to have to do is now we're going to have to uh, uh, contest. That's the new word we're going to start using, contesting. We're contesting. We're not objecting. We're contesting because that's the word they use. So we're going to start using their words. Okay? So a person has the right to be notified. All child support administrative process require the executive agency to notify the responsible parent of the support amount and arrears alleged to be due and owing and a procedure for contesting the claim. See, contesting. These statutes further require that the executive agency serve the notice in a manner reasonably calculated to give the parties actual... They're just, they don't want to tell you what the proper way is. See what they're doing? They're sidestepping that. They don't want to let you know that, that regular mail is not acceptable. You want to know why? Because you can refuse regular mail. Okay? So, you know, when you receive something in the mail, in the envelope, right? Um, I'm Osiris, the first to do these videos. He said, take it and send it back. Okay? 
Now, he's right, but sadly, these people don't, uh, they don't respect that law. And they'll, even if you send it back, they'll still go and have the hearing without you. And you'll still get screwed. But, you know, that's why we can, you know, if we, we, we answer the right way, we put it on paper, it's going to make it harder for them, okay? So, uh, right to a hearing. Courts have also specified the type of and quality of hearing necessary before a person is deprived of property. The hearing must be fair and impartial. Okay, how is it going to be fair and impartial before a surrogate judge whose position was created to establish child support? Their position was created to establish paternity and child support. How is that possible? That's this, the sole purpose of their job is to Established paternity and child, so that means you're you're already behind the eight ball. All right, so right there and there, they're not impartial. Right, they work for child support, so their job is to screw you. So we got to challenge that. The person entitled to the hearing must have reasonable opportunity to present evidence. How many of you guys done that and they won't accept your evidence? Happens all the time, right? Documents the witness confront. The opposing party. How many of you guys have been allowed to confront the other party? Okay. Refute any evidence. How many of you have been given that opportunity? None. Okay. <clears throat> this is my, what is this? Uh, so, you know, pay attention to all these things. These are the things that we're going to be putting on paper. Right to review of an administrative act. That means all of your support orders, unless they're issued by a judge, a real judge, if it's by one of these surrogate judges, you have to judicially review it. Okay? So, the uh, and that's what this is. Okay? That's what this is that I created so you could do this right away okay look at this fucking you can't see this damn spinning wheel okay look at that bad boy all right I got everything covered this is well done I put a lot of work into this thing see I got the footnote on the bottom burnt so everything I have is all backed up so all these facts that I'm stating are backed up by administrative uh, facts uh, using their using this right here I cite this a lot okay so it's gonna make it very difficult for them okay so you got the uh, judicial review a proper hearing includes the right to appeal to a judicial authority okay uh, also we're gonna have to uh, where is it? All right. <clears throat> All right. The presiding officer must take testimony and establish a record. Evaluate evidence and recommendations or decisions. All of their orders are supposed to have evidence in it. Okay? So if you have a support order, look at it and see if you have any evidence cited. Usually there's no evidence cited, okay? So, like, they'll have a findings of facts when no facts and no findings. <laughs> like, they're, they're, their findings of facts will be a statement by them, okay? So they'll just make a statement, you know, that the, uh, you know, findings of fact that the, uh, uh, the non-custodial, the punitive father must pay, blah, 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 blah. That's their findings of fact without any facts or evidence, as I said, okay? Here's uh, accept voluntary acknowledgments of paternity, of support liability, and agreements regarding the amount of support to be paid. Okay, that's uh, 45 CFR 303-101-D3. You're supposed to get a copy of that, so you're going to ask for that from now on, okay? Default order. Now, what I did was, I also, over the weekend, I updated the 
to vacate an order of default for failure to prove willful violation of a support order. Okay, so that means now they have to prove that you were properly notified. Service. Now, if they did what they usually do by mail, how are they going to prove that? Okay. Look at Okay, entering default orders upon showing that process has been served on the defendant in accordance with state law, that the defendant failed to respond to service in accordance with state law. So they're going to have to prove that you were properly notified. Then let's say you were properly notified. They have to prove that you uh, willfully did not show up. They also have to prove that you willfully violated the law. There's a lot of there's a, there's a lot of things they have to prove. Okay, but here's the thing: most of the time, you didn't know about the hearing, so right then and there, you have an excusable neglect. That's uh, under Federal Rule 60B, subsection one. Okay, this is really good. This is well done. Right? So, anybody's interested in a notice to vacate order? This is a brand new one, by the way. <laughs> You can reach out to me, all right? Um, so right then and there, if you want, you want to, uh, here's, I updated the writ of habeas corpus for the void judgment. So what I'm doing now is I created these affidavits that right now, when you receive them, you could start and try and get out of child support immediately without going to a hearing. I mean, without playing games with these people. Okay, without looking at one of these fake judges anymore, you can go to another court. So you could take the writ of habeas corpus and you can go to uh, an appellate court. You never go to the court that issued the order. Never. Okay, because they're not, they're, they're not allowed to hear a, a writ of habeas corpus. Okay, so you go to like an appellate court. Now again, this is really hard, okay, because they don't like to, they don't want anybody to know that this is um, really quick way of remedying uh, an injustice, okay. So um, now a support order is is considered executive imprisonment or, or uh, executive oppression. Because it's coming from an executive agency. Okay, just be remember under uh, 42 U.S.C. 654 subsection 3 um, <clears throat> is a separate unit, right? The, um, the support, the state is a separate, has a separate unit under 654 subsection 3. Okay, so that means it's not part of the courts it's part of the executive branch and any order from them is considered an executive oppression of your rights okay um so where we got here all right this is the case law i show you guys a, a lot um uh people versus shield house okay and let's read it Although the challenge to the jurisdiction of the magistrate's court could have been raised by the defendant on appeal from the judgment of conviction, right, an appeal, they want you to do an appeal. And although that might have been a more orderly and regular method of procedure, the right, here we go, the right to invoke habeas corpus, that's what we're doing, we're invoking a constitutional right. It's the historic writ of liberty. I mean, listen to that statement. It's the historic writ of liberty. Now, this is the New York Court of Appeals saying this. The greatest of all writs is so primary and fundamental. Hold on a second. Let me 
it won't let me uh, view. Uh, where is it at here? Wait a second. All right. Okay. It's so fun that it must take, must, must, it's a very strong word, it must take precedence over considerations of procedural orderliness. If you just take this case law here, write it on a piece of paper, or take it, take get, get the, uh, you know, Google it and print it out, bring it with you to court with the um, writ of habeas corpus and you shove it in their face. And look at here. Article 1, Section 9, New York Constitution, because it's a New York court, okay? And you're going to show them this is why you're allowed to file a writ of habeas corpus without an appeal, without an order to show cause. An order to show cause is a writ of habeas corpus. But it's a procedural writ of habeas corpus, but they call it by a different name. That way they can dismiss it without any reason. That's what they do. Okay? People versus Shieldhouse. Okay? Now, dismissal of first habeas corpus position of federal is particularly serious matter for that dismissal denies the petition of protections. What that means is, oh, yeah, risking injury to important interest in human liberty. In other words, if they, you know, dismiss it, they are risking causing you more because you're already in pain. You're already suffering. That's why you're filing the writ of habeas corpus because you're you're being oppressed. Again, you may not be behind bars, but you, you're behind some form of oppression. The oppression is the uh, income withholding order arising from the fake order. Okay, the order that we're trying to get vacated. So when they just say no, they're causing you pain, right? One day is, every day you have it is pain. That's the reason why here it takes precedence over procedural orderliness. They recognize it here. All right, so I'm showing you this because I'm showing you that you can file a writ of habeas corpus right away, okay? So you can file this right away. You can file this right away if you have a default judgment, right? And this and this is in, in their court, by the way. You file the notice to vacate a default judgment in their court, okay? Or you can file this as a petition. But this is a notice. This is this is in their court, all right. And and uh, and then if that doesn't happen, then you can uh, you file the uh, the petition. But you know if you have a, a default judgment against you, you go this way. If you don't have a default judgment and you have a support order, you can file a petition to vacate a support order. Remember. A lot of you notice from doing your own research, uh, a void judgment can be challenged at any time in any court, okay? This is the way we're doing it, okay? So, and, and, and the basis of these orders is we're using their words against them, okay? All I do is cite case law, and I cite this bad boy here. And it's going to make it very difficult. And as I said, I updated my software. Now I have the, the, the footnotes and I have the, the, uh, the citations, okay, in the order, uh, in the petition or the motion or writ of habeas corpus. It's right in front of them. So they can't say they don't know. Or you didn't tell them. You didn't show them. It's right there in front of their eyes. See what I do? I put the whole damn thing in there. Okay, so, all right, so I'm going to shut this down to show you guys that they're using judicial process against you, and every one of you, okay, you can study this and learn. This is it.
Chapter 6, Expedited Judicial Administrative Processes. Okay. Um, one second. Let's get this guy out there going crazy. He's, he's a new homeowner. He's, he's uh, looking for every excuse to go outside and use his uh, leaf blower. <laughs> uh, where the hell is it? Oh, this is a new one I'm working on. It's not done yet. Notice to contest. Notice to court contesting expedited proceedings. Okay. Well, remember, we're not objecting anymore. We're contesting. It's not done yet. So obviously, if it's not done, that means you don't have it. That means it's not part of the package. So, you know, I get whenever I do these videos, I always get these uh, emails from people. Hey, Rick. Uh, I don't have it. Uh, send it to me, you know, because whenever somebody sends me, uh, you know, the gift for my paperwork, they think they're entitled to all my future paperwork. Okay. It doesn't work that way. I hate to sound, but you're already getting a great deal. Many of you know that many of you that have my paperwork and many of you reach out to me and I say, Rick, uh, what do I got to give you? And you know what I normally do? I give it to you for nothing. I dislike people that don't presume that they're entitled to my paperwork. Okay? It's manners. Okay? I had a guy, he's reaching out to me like crazy. The guy sent me 60 emails. All right? I had to say something to him to finally get a, you know, I'm like, dude, you know, you, you think maybe you can, you, did it ever occur to you maybe to send me some more money? I mean, you only have, you know, hit me with 60 emails. <laughs> it's like crazy, this guy. All right, so I'm going into my complaining phase, and I'm going to stop that. All right, so guys, uh, study the, the expedited, all right, judicial and administrative processes, all right? I got the, uh, if you're interested out there, um, you want to send me some money, you want to pick up those three affidavits, reach out to me, and you can go right into battle with them. They're, they're, they're ready to go, okay? All right, guys. Enjoy the rest of your day. And remember, vote Republican Tuesday. I'll talk to you later.